Okay, uh, hello everyone and welcome to this session on gaming with control. First of all, I would like to start off with uh, who am I and why I'm here talking about this. Uh, well, my name is Björn Tibling. Uh, I'm a product manager here at Toby Dynavox. Uh, I joined about one and a half year ago. Uh, reason for joining is that uh, my son was born with uh, hypoxia. And that opened uh, the entire world of uh, AAZ for me. Uh, and I was lucky enough to be able to, to join this company and uh, being a part of solving the puzzles that need to be solved. So today uh, I'm here to talk about one of the applications that I am responsible for, and that is control. Internally, when we talk about control, uh, we keep, or at least we try to keep this in mind. Uh, we would like to empower people to play games and use the software they choose using their eyes. And what that means in practice is that uh, we would like to create a world where you can basically pick up whatever applications that you would like to use or whatever game that you would like to play and just Play that with your eyes. You shouldn't have to think about, does this work with eye gaze? Can I actually use this? Just find whatever you would like to do and uh, enjoy it. That's the world we like to drive in. So today when we start talking about gaming, uh, I want to make a, a few things clear. There. Mostly when people talk about gaming with eye gaze, they're thinking about this kind of games like tic-tac-toe or these kind of reaction games where you look and something happens or chess or things like that. And while well, that is perfectly fine, if, if this is what you would like to play and you enjoy it, just go ahead, uh, please do. But when I'm talking about gaming, I'm talking about more advanced gaming. Uh, I'm talking about f f games like Civilization, uh, <laughs> where you basically, uh, create your own world and try to conquer it. Um, I'm talking about Hearthstone, where you play in really advanced uh, card game card games, or I'm talking about Grim Fandango, uh, one of my favorite games actually, where you just enjoy walking through a world and solving puzzles. Uh, the end goal is, of course, games as FIFA as well, playing Fortnite or whatever game you would like to do uh, and play. But uh, this is what I'm going to talk about uh, today. First, I would like to start off though with why we're looking into gaming, uh, because I get that question a lot, like what does this have to do uh, with everything? How does this fit into the big picture? And uh, well, I can tell, I could tell you a lot of stuff. I could tell you that like, this is the biggest industry we have. Uh, like if you compare it to movies or things like that, gaming is so much bigger. Uh, it just makes a lot of, a lot of money. I could also tell you, like, uh, if you start looking at the audience, it's actually uh, in the US. Uh, in the US, only NFL is bigger uh, or have a bigger audience than gaming. Then uh, after gaming comes MLB and or uh, NBA uh, and everything else. So, like, just from the share audience that's looking at it as well, it's it's huge. But the real reasons behind it is that it's one of the really, really good uh, equalizers out there. Because when you're playing a game, no one is going to treat you differently uh, how you're playing it. If you play it with your controller, uh, if you're playing it using a bunch of switches, or if you're playing it with eye gaze, uh, no one would treat you differently. They're only going to judge you on <laughs> how good you're actually at the game. Uh, but no one is going to care how you're playing that game. So we see that as a really, really great thing with gaming. Internally, we also see it as a good opportunity to learn. Uh, we would like to solve the hardest problems so we can take what we learn from that and apply in other fields. Like if we can fix gaming, uh, can we apply that to, to drawing? Can we apply that to people working in Excel? Can we apply that to everywhere? We, we think the answer is yes. And that is why we're trying to tackle this uh, one of the hardest problems. Uh, 
So, okay, I'm saying that it's it's hard to do. I'm like trying to imply that <laughs> at least. Uh, but uh, why is gaming hard then? Well, it is hard because you cannot separate your input method from uh, what you're looking at. Uh, you need to understand what's happening and then you need to act on it. You need to do both of that using your eyes. Some games also require you to do that really, really fast, which make it even uh, harder. Some cases, it even comes down to reflexes that you're going to have to react on. Uh, and sometimes in some games, you have to jump and shoot, for example, at the same time, which makes that even harder to do with eye gaze. Uh, I like to use this example here on the, uh, on the screen with, uh, with juggling, uh, because when you're juggling, or at least imagine uh, that you would like to juggling just using your eyes. Well, then, then you have to first of all pick up the balls, right? I mean, that that seems fairly simple. But uh, then you have to start throwing them up into the air. You need to look at where they are all the time, and then you need to catch them. And when you catch them, you need to throw another one to keep this circle kind of going. And to do all of that at the same time, just using your eyes, that's uh, a lot of things you need to keep track of, and that is why it is uh, it's so hard. So if we take that as, or if we look at an example for an actual game, uh, I'm going to show you Duta playing here right now. And uh, as you can see here, there are a lot of things going on at the same time. So right now we have to keep our eyes on everything that's going on here on the screen. You can see things popping up on the left of the right, uh, indicating what's happening on the screen. You can see at the top, uh, I can see some health uh, and uh, things from other other players on the bottom. I can see my own stats, what's going on with cooldowns and things like that. On the lower left, I have a minimap, so I can keep track of where everyone else is and what they're doing. And I need to do all of this at the same time. Uh, and imagine now, doing this with only your eyes, moving around, playing the game, uh, making sure that you understand and see what's happening everywhere. This is really, really hard. And this is what we're trying to solve here. Uh, what we're trying to make sure that you can actually do using your eyes. So if we jump forward a bit then and just ask ourselves like, okay, that's really nice, but how do we get there? How do we actually make sure that we can play these kind of ga uh, games with eye gaze? Well, we believe that this is the way of doing it. Uh, taking small, small steps or a small iteration, uh, listening to people who's been trying it out, who's been trying to play these games, looking at the data of how they're actually uh, are playing the games, and then just repeat it, take another small step and, and learn. Uh, that's that's kind of the key. Uh, we might have to do this over and over 10,000 times or 100,000 times, I, I, I don't know. But this is kind of the way that we're trying to make sure that you can play more games uh, using your eyes. So to take one example there now then and see what we actually are doing here, uh, we can go back to this screen that I had there before, uh, just looking at, okay, let's look at this cause and effect game uh, here, uh, because we got this request uh, in the team like, okay, we would like to be able to play these cause and effect games. Just really simple, you look at uh, these uh, figures and they jump up and down. So to be able to do that, you need to basically hover over them with your mouse. So we created a simplified continuous mode inside control, where basically all that you can do is move the mouse around. You can choose to show and hide the trace to show, uh, so you can see where you're looking, and you can choose to click or not click. Those are the only things you can do inside this mode. and. Uh, we released that to all of our beta testers and to all of our users, actually. And then we just waited for the feedback, which was really, really interesting, uh, or at least I think so. Uh, because one of the things that we came that came back was that one of our users was using this uh, to manage uh, her Spotify lists to 
uh, sh listen to music, put music into different kinds of uh, uh, of playlists, ordering them, uh, and like uh, adding the heart symbol there to like them, things like that. Uh, she was only using this mode to move, move around there. The problem she had though was that now that uh, the click is immediate, uh, it was kind of hard to see where exactly the click is going to be. So we looked at that uh, a bit and uh, then we tried to just make the trace smaller. So we made this little change uh, here and uh, the feedback we got it was like, yeah, this, this helps a lot. Uh, it actually makes it harder. And that is one of those small steps that I talked about before. Just doing these small, small things, making the trace smaller, changing something, just like do that and listen to the feedback, understand why they would like to have this change. How does this affect what we're doing? Like those small steps is what we need to do to, to slowly move uh, towards us, uh, uh, a world where we can play more games. And we did a bunch of these iterations on this mode. We tried a, a few things and to kind of show you where we ended up, uh, we started here with this game, uh, just cause and effect. And uh, we ended up uh, creating a mode that was used for playing Hearthstone. So I'm going to show you that now. And in this video, you're already in this mode. You started a game and uh, as you can see, uh, you move around uh, your little uh, hander just by looking at it, and as soon as you fixate your uh, your eyes on something, it's gonna execute a click. So as you can see here, I can start up the game. I can go through all of these uh, 200 pop-ups uh, in the game. I can choose what to play here. I'm gonna go for a solo adventure. Uh, seems like this one should be fine. Uh, so I'm going to go click in there as well. Uh, some text pop up. I can read that without any problem, uh, accidentally clicking on something. And um, when I'm ready to play the game, uh, I just look over to the play button there, fixate my gaze, and it clicks. So now I'm going to start off that game. And uh, yeah, we have to wait for some loading here. But uh, the reason for me showing this entire video is just I want to make sure that you can see I'm not doing anything with the keyboard, not anything with the mouse, not changing mode, anything like that. I'm basically just using this mode to play this game. So now it has loaded. Uh, I'm inside the game. I can start the moving things around. I can click on stuff. Uh, I can basically enjoy the game without thinking about control. And that for me is the real beauty around it. As you can see, I can even uh, click on my friends there to see if they're online and what they're doing. But but this is the key thing here that I feel like we would like to do with control. And that is to make sure that you can focus on enjoying the game and not thinking about how control can works, work with that game. So yeah, that's this is one of the things that, that uh, I would encourage people to try playing. It's actually a, a free game uh, that you can play. So that's nice. Okay, moving on then. That was a Carl Bayes game, but what about more advanced games? And one of those uh, more advanced games is StarCraft II, uh, where you have to do a bunch of things, keep track of them, and you have to move around in a little world as well. So what we did there was basically, uh, we had to figure out how do you move the camera around? Uh, what we did was that uh, we fought kind of hard about it and then we realized, why don't you just move the map when you're looking at the edge of the screen? Because that makes sense, right? I want to move the screen to the right. So I look at the edges, just as when you would like to, to, to look to the right, you look to the right and you get more rights, so to say. So as you can see here, uh, I'm playing StarCraft 2. Uh, I'm gonna build myself a supply depot there, uh, and and then I'm gonna show you here how I can just move the camera. So when I look at the right side, as you can see, I move the screen up uh, to the right. I look up, I move it up, I look down, uh, and I move the screen to the to the bottom there. So if I now take all of these, uh, all my little minions there, I can easily grab them, tell them to please go up here. Uh, so I right click there, 
And then I can just move the screen to make sure I follow them as well. So that makes most of these uh, kind of 3D platform games uh, playable because it's now you can move your screen around. Uh, here is uh, one of my favorite games, uh, all-time favorite games called Grim Fandango. And in here I'm also using this simplified continuous mode. So as you can see here, as I move my eyes around, my cursor changed into different kinds of Domino stuff. So I can as I can click on it. Files. Not a bad idea, actually. And I can move my character around in this world, uh, talk to people, uh, and uh, just enjoy the game, uh, just as with Hearthstone there, without thinking too much about control or what control is doing. Uh, this is another one of those games that I would <laughs> just recommend everyone playing, because it's just so good, what and it's uh, really enjoyable Daddy, with control as well. So here you can see I can also like choose what it's about to say, just I say, look at it, and it what will click on it. So this is really enjoyable. Uh, another the example here ruler of China. is uh, oh, Civilization V, uh, where I can easily uh, use control just as in StarCraft to, to play the game. Uh, enjoy it. I can move the, the map around by looking at the edges. And the good thing about this game is that it is uh, turn-based. So I can always uh, take it in my pace. I don't have to feel stressed about what I'm doing or something like that. Also one of the games that I would uh, recommend people to try. So three games and they are completely playable, uh, enjoyable, I would actually even say. Uh, please try them out. Please recommend uh, them to people as well, because uh, at least I personally feel like playing games is one of the best way of actually learning how to use control. If you like games, well, learn control by playing games. I think that's a, a really good way to be... Uh, or a really good way to be introduced to Control. But of course there are more games, so I'm, I'm hoping that kind of you would like to, to see more of them. Uh, so I don't want to uh, waste your time going through uh, all of the games that we've been playing, uh, trying out. I'm just going to give you a few examples now, like Angry Birds, uh, one of those classic games, trying out, enjoy them. Uh, this is Candy Crush Saga. Uh, my mom has been playing this game for I don't know how long. So uh, I'm guessing, mom, this one is for you. Uh, you can enjoy this uh, just with your eyes now. Uh, Plant vs. Zombies, uh, another great game. Uh, <clears throat> game, uh, game Dev Tycoon uh, is uh, you create your own games. It's kind of without the one true heart, uh, the, the one true card game, uh, magic, uh, also enjoyable, uh, simplified continuous mode, and then uh, yeah, Civilization Six here, uh, as I showed you before. We have a long list uh, of games that you can play. Uh, if you want to take a screenshot here, please do. Uh, these are the ones that you can easily play and enjoy uh, using Control, and there are a bunch more. And we're always uh, looking at how to add more uh, games to this list. Okay, cool. Uh, that is a bunch of game, but uh, how do I get them then? Well, most of the games that we have, have here on our list, you can either get on Steam. Basically, open your web browser, Google for Steam, and you can download our one-stop shop for a lot of games. Uh, works li really well with Control as well, this whole Steam application, so you can just download whatever you would like to have. Battle.net is one out of those where you can download uh, Blizzard games, uh, like Hearthstone there, that's actually free to start playing with. Uh, so the same there, just Google Battle.net and you will be able to use that. Also, really easy to use with Control. So, that's basically what I had today. Uh, the key thing here is that you will need control uh, to do everything that I, I talked about here. And if you have an i-series or a PCI-5, uh, control always comes bundled with that. So you should have that installed. 
And as you're playing these games, please reach out to us if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you find anything that uh, you can't do with control, please reach out because we need all the feedback we can get uh, to actually get better at this. And uh, don't be a stranger. Uh, we're here, we're here, and we would like to make sure that this is actually enjoyable. So, yes, uh, thank you for for taking the time and listening to me. Please reach out, as I said before, and uh, keep playing those games. Thank you.